Now, number 20. Okay, so before we even look at the shape, let's try and identify what it is. First things first, when we look inside the circle, we have a four-sided shape. So when you've got four, a four-sided shape where each point touches the circle, this is actually known as a cyclic quadrilateral, yeah? Now, one property of the cyclic quadrilateral, guys, is that the angles on each corner sum up to 180. So for example, we can call this angle here A, and at point C, we can call it C. This tells us that A and C must sum up to 180, or B and D also sums up to um, 180. Okay, another thing we can notice is that these two lengths appear to be the same lengths, yeah? So we'll come to that in a second. Now, according to the info, it says A, B, C, and D are points in a circle. TDV is a tangent to a circle. So tangent means it touches at one point. So we can see that this is angled at 71. Okay. A, the length of AB equals AD, so we saw that earlier. Work out the size of angle BCD and then give a reason for each stage of your working out. So guys, the only way to work out this angle BCD, so we're talking about angle C, is to somehow begin and relate angle 71 with the tangent and this random chord, yeah? And the only one I can think of right now is something known as the alternate segment theorem. And it looks a bit like this, the formula. The alternate segment theorem tells us that if you've got some angle B here, then and a tangent and some sort of chord, then wherever this angle is, it's going to be equal to the other side of it. But the shape has to be a triangle first. So let's just do it right now, guys, yeah? At the moment, we go quadrilateral. So let's try and rewrite this as a triangle. So you got your chord, you got your chord, you got your tangent. I'm going to draw a straight line from B connecting to D, yeah? Now this tells us that if you've got 71 here, then on the other side of the chord, so we're talking about the other side, so over here, this angle here, just the first bit of it, let's call it X, equals 71. So not the whole B, but just this part. Now another useful property, guys, here, yeah, is that because you've got some sort of like equal lengths here, we actually got an isosceles triangle secretly here. So this means that this part here is also 71 degrees. Okay. And because you've got that information, you can now work out what A is. And we know that all we know that all angles in a triangle always adds up to 180. So we basically have A plus what well, 71 plus 71 gives us 142, and it's supposed to equal 180. This means if you minus 142 across, this angle A is now going to equal uh, 38 degrees. And that's it, guys. Now finally, like if we go back to the cyclic quadrilateral rule, we said earlier that angle A and C sum up to make 180 as well. Now because we know that A here is 38 we can easily work out C. Well, if you subtract 38 to this one, you're going to go back to a C value of 142 degrees. And that's the answer, guys. The angle BCD is 142 degrees. And yeah, that's it. All right, number 21. So a solid is made from a hemisphere and a cylinder. Okay. So the plane face of a hemisphere coincides with the upper plane face of the cylinder. Okay, so just to label this carefully, this bottom deck is actually the cylinder, and the top half is half of a sphere, so it's also known as a hemisphere. Okay, so we're going to see what formulas we need before we actually answer this. Now, on the next part, it says that the hemisphere and the cylinder have the same radius. Now, this is because they're both like decked up in the same way, so you can imagine there's a radius here, and the bottom half also has a radius like that, yeah? Um, the ratio of the radius of the cylinder to the height of the cylinder is 1 to 3. Okay, cool. So if we just imagine we've got some vertical height like that, yeah? Let's call it H. What we're trying to say here is that the radius of this shape, if you imagine it's one part, must be equivalent to this side as if it was three parts. So this is basically three times the radius. So let's just call the radius X for a second, yeah? Let's let R equal X. That means the height must be three times X, okay? Given that the sword has a volume of 792 pi centimeter cubed, Work at the height of the solid. Alright, cool. Let's have a go. So, to work this out, guys, we just need to work out the volume of the hemisphere and the volume of the cylinder. Well, thankfully, we know both the formulas. We can say that the volume of the cylinder is just um, pi r squared height, uh, h, and the volume of the hemisphere is actually half of a sphere. So, if you know a sphere is just um, 4 thirds pi r cubed, that means half of this would just be half of 4 thirds, which is 2 thirds. So, if I just... Um, delete this one and just write two-thirds so just two-thirds of that shape yeah and it's telling us that the combined total equals 792 pi so let's write down here yeah we can say that um, the total volume V equals um, 
the cylinder, so pi r squared h. So instead of r and h, I'm going to replace r of x and h of 3x. So it can be pi um, x squared and then 3x plus the other shape, the hemisphere. So 2 thirds, 2 thirds pi x cubed. And all of that's supposed to equal 792 pi. But we'll get to that in a second, yeah? Now, if we go ahead and multiply this term out here and just replace the volume with 792 pi, we now got 792 pi equals um, pi times x squared times 3x. That's just going to give us 3x cubed pi, okay? Uh, plus 2 thirds pi x cubed. Okay, so when you look at all, this, all of these terms here, they each have a pi. So that means we could just cancel them out. So let's just delete the pi across. So these all cancel out. And then if we just tie this up now, we now got 792 equals, well, we're just left with 3x cubed plus 2 thirds x cubed. Well, 3 plus 2 thirds is actually 11 thirds and then x cubed. And now we just rearrange my x subject. So in your calculator, guys, and we can do this all in one go, we can do 792 divided by that fraction, 11 thirds, and that equals x cubed. And then in your calculator, if you do that, you should get 216, okay? So 792 over that is 216. And now, conveniently, if we cube root this, we're going to get a perfect answer of 6. And that's it, guys. We've got x result 6. And remember, x here represents the radius, right? So to get the height, it's going to be 3 times x. So 3 times 16 means the height is going to be 18. So it's 18 centimeters. And that's it, guys. Sorry guys, they want the height of the solid, not the height of the graph. So actually, the height of the solid is the whole thing up. So one more thing. So we know that this is the height. That means the radius, you know, because we're dealing with sphere, if this is the radius, then this is also the radius. Because remember, it's, it's the same all the way around. So actually, this length was 3x, our height was x. So actually, we're trying to work out 3x plus x. So we want 4x. We want the total height, yeah? That means the final result, which is going to be 4x, is going to be 18 plus 6. Or 6 times 4, by the way, which is 24 centimeters. And that's a real height, guys. The result here should be 24. Okay, let's go down. So the graph of y equals sine x for x between 0 and 360 is drawn in the grid. Okay, so here's our natural sine wave graph where our peak is always at 1 and the other peak is at minus 1. And this is just one complete loop from 0 degrees all the way through 360. Okay. Now on the grid, we need to draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x plus 30 for x between 0 and 360. Okay, okay. So how to convert a sine x, regular sine, to 2 times sine and x plus 30? Well, let's look at the first digit, the 2, yeah? What this tells us that the graph now is being doubled, okay? So to double this kind of graph, it just means that if the height was 1, we now double 1 to 2. So this means that the, the, the peak of this shoots up to here. And likewise, if, if the peak at the bottom was minus 1, then this now shoots to minus 2. Okay, so now we know how high it shoots. What about x plus 30? Well, this just tells you where the, the, the coins on the x-axis will shift. So this means that they all shift 30 degrees. Now be careful, guys. It says x plus 30. This doesn't mean you shift it to the right by 30 degrees. In fact, you shift it to the left by 30 because it's always inverted inside the bracket. So what I'm trying to say is that we're going to now move everything this way by 30 degrees, okay? So if you think about, if we drew the original graph for a second here, so let's use the dotted line. This means that this point here would have been over here. This point here would have been over here. So it would have been something like this, 30 degrees to the left. And then likewise, this would have been here, this would have been here, and so on. So let's just see how it looks like. So this is going to be our peak. It shoots like that, hits at this point. Uh, 30 here, 30 to the left here, uh, 30 left here, and 30 left there. So it looks a bit like that, guys. So here's our new new peak up here, and you just follow along until it hits here. Perfect. So that's exactly where it should be. Now this was the the the, the 30 degrees to the left bit. So if we're going to shoot this upwards, this means that the new peak would be here, and the new bottom peak would be here. Okay, and it always and the, the new 180 is going to be this over here and likewise the new 360 is here and this peak shoots up well double this peak will go up to here so let's try and plot this yeah and oh yeah last one this peak over here shoots up to here so yeah let's just have a go so if i'm going to do this right now i'm going to connect all the purple dots so it's going to look like this and then this one's going to shoot all the way down to here 
and now we need to get to this point here so it's going to just curve down here curve back up and then lastly end at this point here okay so oh, almost smooth but yeah that's basically the main idea just smooth it up now for part b which is completely unrelated guys <laughs> write x squared minus 6x plus 10 in the complete the square form by the way so this is always complete the square where a and b are integers okay so simply to complete the square all i do guys is i always underline the first two terms yeah and now all you gotta do is also wrap this up in a, some sort of square format the trick is is to firstly open the bracket copy the term x and then half the coefficient of six so the number in front of the regular x well half of six is three and then wrap that nicely in the square and the second bit is copy out the plus 10 and then the final bit is to always subtract the thing you just uh, half so square so basically square the three so it'll be minus three squared and you're done guys and now we just combine the plus 10 and minus 3 squared well in your calculator plus 10 minus 3 squared which is 9 so 10 take away 9 is 1 so our final result would be x minus 3 squared plus 1 and yeah that's it you complete the square now for part 2 hence describe fully the single transformation that maps the curve of equation y equals x squared onto the curve of equation y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10 okay so how do you move from here to there now keyword guys every time they use the word hence it means use your previous result in other words use the result from bi that one okay so comparing y equals x squared and y equals x minus 3 or squared plus 1 we can see now that we've they've inserted a minus 3 so this is a shift in the x-axis by three points and this is plus 1 outside so it means it's, it's gone up by plus one just so a nice way to say this is that we can say that this entire transformation so simply put we can say that this entire transformation is a translation okay so that's one mark you say the word translation because translation means a movement and you say a movement what you can say a translation of um three and one now this vector means that well the three means that it's moved across the x-axis by three points and the one means it's moved across the y-axis by one point. In other words, it's gone three to the right and one up. And that's exactly what this means. Yeah, and we're good here, guys. Now, for 23, it says ABCD is a kite with AB equal to AD and CB equal to CD. I think it's good we just draw this right now, yeah? So you've got kite, we just draw a regular kite, yeah? And a kite always has um, two, you know, equal, two equal lengths two matching pair equal lengths so for example these two would be equal maybe that looks horrible and then these two would be equal now it tells us here that a b equals a d yeah so if we just wrote this as um i don't know a b and this one being a d therefore we can call this one c b and c d okay so this looks okay so far now it says b is the point with coordinates 10 9 okay so we can say this one has coordinates 10 19 sorry Whereas D is the point coordinates 2, 7. So this has coordinates 2, 7. Now find an equation of the line AC. So AC, AC. Okay, so it's straight line going down here. Yeah? So we're talking about kind of straight across. Okay. AC. Um, give your answer in that usual form. Okay, so easy trick for this guy. Such an easy trick. The trick is that because you know kites have two equal lengths, two pairs equal lengths, we can pretty much work out the length of BD because BD is, is basically perpendicular. Even though my graph doesn't say so, we can work out the length of the equation of BD and then just flip the gradient using the perpendicular rule and work out the length of the equation of AC. So let's do BD first, yeah? We can say for BD, um, we can work out the gradient of that line. Well, the gradient of that line is always the change in y coordinates over the change in x coordinates. And we need the points of B and D to do that. So looking at the points of B and D, we can say that, well, the change in y coordinates would be 19 take away 7, which is 12, and 10 take away 2, which is 8. Okay. And well, you could simplify that if you want, yeah? But we could do that in the next step. Therefore, we could say that um, for line AC, this is clearly perpendicular. So that means the gradient for this line will be the negative reciprocal. And that's what you do. So negative reciprocal means you flip it upside down and then you flip the sign. So it becomes a minus 8 over 12. Yeah, so that's good so far. And just for the sake of sake of it, guys, we should um, simplify the fraction, and you should get now minus two thirds. 
now we got pretty much our gradient here guys so what's next okay so let's try our equation now so the general form of equation and this is a straight line yeah is always y equals mx plus c so updating this we have y equals minus two thirds x plus c so our final step now guys is to literally figure out um, a, a point for a coordinate on this line to work out c now the question is where do we find it well conveniently guys you can see like from the shape of the kite the midpoint is actually halfway between b and d and also halfway between a and c technically we can just work out the midpoint of b and d and that's a perfect point on the line of ac so let's work out the midpoint yeah let's call this midpoint m yeah so we can say to work out any midpoint the trick is is to literally add up the pair of coordinates. So for example, add up 10 and 2 for an x coordinate and then half it. We can see that 10 plus 2 is 12, so we've got 12, and we half it. That gives you x coordinate. For the y coordinate, we do 19 plus 7. That should give us 26, and you half that as well. Therefore, resulting, resulting each one, 12 over 2 is 6. 26 over 2, guys, is 13. And that's nice because that's a point on the line. Now, we're going to substitute this coordinate into this line and then solve for C. So this means when X is 6 and Y is 13, we can put this in. So replace Y and X with 13 and 6. We should therefore have uh, 13 equals minus 2 over 3 times uh, 6 plus C. And yeah, guys, now if you just word this out, you can see that uh, minus 2 over 3 times 6 in your calculator will give us minus 4 scroll this down a bit and then you know copying out the rest you got 13 and plus c therefore adding four across guys you should get c value of um, 13 plus 4 is 17 and yeah i think we're basically done now so now we know what c is so we can update our equation once more so it's now going to look like this we now got um therefore y equals minus 2 over 3 x plus 17. now going back to the question the question tells us to give your answer in the form of py plus qx equals r, where p, q, and r are integers. Okay, so rule one, you've got to put x and y on both sides and make it equal to a number, and then clear out the fraction, because they don't want fractions. So, let's do it now. Let's move two-thirds x across, so we can add it across. So, it looks like, um, where is it? y or x first? Okay, y is first. So, it's going to become y plus 2 over 3 x equals 17 and now all you want to do guys is literally clear the fraction so to clear the fraction if you've got a 3 at the bottom just multiply the whole set by 3 if you do that you're going to get 3y plus 2x because the fraction is cleared and then 17 times 3 is 51 and that's it guys this should be a result 3y plus 2x equals 51 